cyanide exposure can occur through various sources. These include industrial activities such as jewelry cleaning, electroplating, and metallurgy. Natural cyanogens like linamarin and amygdalin can also release cyanide during metabolism. Incomplete combustion of nitrogen-containing materials in structure fires, including plastics, vinyl, wool, and silk, is another source. Rarely, cyanide exposure may result from criminal poisoning or suicide attempts. The primary mechanism of toxicity involves the disruption of cellular respiration within the mitochondria. Patients with cyanide poisoning often present with a rapid development of cardiovascular collapse, metabolic acidosis with elevated plasma lactate concentrations, depressed mental status, seizures, and ultimately death. A significant diagnostic challenge is that laboratory confirmation of cyanide concentration is often unavailable in real time. Empirical treatment should be considered for individuals such as laboratory workers, industrial workers, and fire exposure victims who exhibit specific signs and symptoms. These include cardiac arrest, altered mental status, elevated plasma lactate concentrations, severe metabolic acidosis, and hypotension. Cyanide poisoning commonly occurs alongside carbon monoxide poisoning. Hydroxocobalamin, also known as vitamin B12A, acts as a cyanide scavenger. It forms non-toxic cyanocobalamin on an equimolar basis. The onset of action is rapid, and it is noted for its ease of administration. Potential adverse effects include transient hypertension, skin discoloration, rash, and interference with colorimetric laboratory assays. Hydroxocobalamin has food and drug administration approval for use alone. Sodium nitrite works by oxidizing hemoglobin to methemoglobin, which binds cyanide to form cyanmethemoglobin. Potential adverse effects include hypotension and worsening of oxygen-carrying capacity in concurrent carbon monoxide poisoning. Precise dosing is necessary, especially in children and patients with anemia. Sodium thiosulfate serves as a substrate for cyanide metabolism, leading to minimally toxic thiocyanate. It has a slower onset of action compared to hydroxocobalamin and sodium nitrite. There is potential for synergistic benefits when used with hydroxocobalamin or sodium nitrite. Sodium thiosulfate has few adverse effects. However, it is not recommended as monotherapy for life-threatening poisoning due to its slow action. Hydroxocobalamin is recommended as the primary treatment for cyanide poisoning. It is preferred because of its rapid action and lack of exacerbation of decreased oxygen-carrying capacity or hypotension. Sodium nitrite is a recommended alternative when hydroxocobalamin is unavailable. It is appropriate for use when carbon monoxide poisoning is not a concern. Adjunctive therapy with sodium thiosulfate is reasonable in addition to hydroxocobalamin or sodium nitrite. It enhances cyanide elimination. The administration of 100% oxygen is also reasonable for cyanide poisoning. Animal studies suggest a benefit when combined with cyanide-specific antidotes. Oxygen administration is reasonable even with a normal partial pressure of oxygen due to cyanide's impairment of cellular respiration. For individuals exposed to structure fires, co-poisoning with carbon monoxide is a common concern. In these cases, Hydroxocobalamin is the primary recommended treatment. Caution should be exercised with sodium nitrite in patients with concurrent carbon monoxide poisoning, children, and anemic individuals due to the risk of hypotension and reduced oxygen carrying capacity. There are limitations in the evidence base. No human clinical trials compare cyanide treatments with placebo. Additionally, there are no direct comparisons of cyanide treatment options alone or in combination in human trials. No human studies involve cardiac arrest due to cyanide poisoning. In conclusion, healthcare providers must remain vigilant in recognizing the signs and symptoms of cyanide poisoning. Empirical treatment should be initiated promptly in suspected cases. Hydroxocobalamin is the preferred treatment due to its rapid action and safety profile. Sodium nitrite and sodium thiosulfate serve as alternatives or adjuncts depending on the clinical scenario. Supportive care, including the administration of 100% oxygen, remains a cornerstone of management. Awareness of special populations and potential co-poisonings ensures optimal patient outcomes.
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.